Hello, I'm Thack from Thack Ironworks. Welcome to the channel. Today we will be doing a rapouche project that is taking brass sheet metal in this case and we're going to be sculpting it into a wonderful form. Now you may have watched other tutorials on YouTube for rapouche or reposé as some people mispronounce it apparently. Uh, and you might have seen things like an acanthus leaf or a fleur-de-lis or a Tudor rose. Ooh, mm. Me, I like to do something maybe a little bit more interesting. So this is the subject matter for du jour. So color me old fashioned, but when I'm sculpting, I like to do things like naked women, snakes, skulls, demons, that sort of thing. Maybe that's just me, but anyway, that's what we're gonna be doing. So we're gonna be doing what's called the snake goddess here. Um, this is uh, what I've worked out. For. This is a panel for a secret project. Um, if you wanna know what the secret project is, you have to support me on Patreon because that's on our Patreon channel. That's our page. That's where we reveal a lot of the inner workings, all the intrigue and mystery that happens behind the scenes at Thack Ironworks. So you can check that out. But for now, let's begin. All right, so I've got a piece of brass sheet here, about 18 gauge brass sheet, and I have annealed the center of it where I'm going to be uh, putting my female form. Um, annealing with non-ferrous metals involves heating it up to you see some color, like an orange heat, and then quenching it in water. It's the opposite of uh, ferrous metals or steel, where when you quench it, it hardens it um, with brass, copper, or the copper-based metals, it does the opposite and softens it. So now um, this area is nice and soft and ready to start working. So what I've done is I've cut out a cutout of my female form here, and I'm just gonna trace that onto the brass with a Sharpie. Stand her arms up in there. So that is my rough shape, what I'm working on. Now we will go to the sandbag. Okay, so I'm on my uh, lead shot bag here and I'm just taking a ball peen and hammering out a little bulge roughly in the shape of my female. Okay, so I've got a rough bulge here. I've just flipped it over and redrawn my figure on there. Now I'm going to um, just knock it down. Okay, so right now I am melting pitch, the pitch will form a backer um, into which I'll be working from the outside. So I'm just getting some chunks in here with a heat gun and melting it. Looks like chocolate, does not taste like chocolate. All right, so I've got it on my pitch board now. Um, I had to do it diagonally so I can get the full shape within there. Now, hopefully, I can get clamps to reach in far enough to hold it in place. All right, and we're in place now. I'm just going to start profiling the edge. I'm going to take a dull, cold chisel with a slight radius. Most of this will be curved, so I'll just be outlining.
Okay, so I've done my first pass here, just basically outlined and just got some general shaping to it. Now I'm gonna pull it out, re-anneal it, and push out from the inside there. I need to bring the butt up and you know, a couple of the bulges need to come outwards so that I can go back now. I'm just gonna use this product here, which is an anti-graffiti spray called GAT. I can just spray it onto my Sharpie marks there. And it takes away all the lines there, so now I can start with a fresh slate here and see what I'm actually looking at. Okay, so I'll pull it off, I'll get the pitch out, re-anneal, and back onto the pitch board. All right, well, I'm, I just annealed my piece. I'm just waiting for it to dry off a little bit. Here's a little clay mock-up I did um, just to give me the uh, topographical map of what I'm trying to do here. Um, a two-dimensional sketch is, is limited when you're trying to do this sort of thing. So um, I did this a couple of months ago, actually, in anticipation for this, um, just to give me a bit of a guide as I'm doing it. My inspiration for this was based on a painting by Frank Frazetta, um, called uh, Swamp Demon. So this is, this was the figure kind of the inspired me to to do this uh, motif. Um, Frank Frazetta is my favorite artist, period. Full stop, that's it right there. Um, I just love his work. It's so, I don't know, exaggerated, gritty, visceral, just very, you know, the exaggerated poses and everything like that um, just has a lot of energy. I, I find it very much like Baroque um, art, man, like my favorite sculptor in the, in the Baroque period would be Bernini, you know, since that, that liveliness, um, there's something inherent in Frazetta's work always has that sense of um, movement that I really like. Anyway, uh, I digress, but anyway, I. Not, just so you guys don't think I'm plagiarizing, I was plagiarizing ever so slightly in that I, I use this uh, as my guide here. Um, you can see that from our first pass there, the pitch transferred itself onto my pitch board there, and I've actually got um, my positive shape here that came out of the, uh, um, the back of the brass there. So what I'm going to do is now get some more pitch in there and kind of top up where I think I need some more highs in there and then I'll be able to um, work this shape. All right, so I've done uh, pass number two. Um, it's starting to work hard, and so I just gatted it up to get rid of the Sharpie to see what I'm actually looking at. The Sharpie gives a false delineation, so I wanna see where I'm at. It's actually taking shape pretty good there. Um, still some need to punch up the detail, refine quite a bit yet. I need to get in details like the hand there and in the neck and stuff like that. Um, bring the butt out a little bit. She needs some enhancement in that area, also the heels. So. I'm going to anneal it and then over to the shot bag and I'm going to push out some of the areas that need to come up and then back into place. So we are, I would say, halfway through this process now.
Did you know that Jennifer Lopez and I are the exact same age? I'm not sure what made me think of that. All right, work hardened. Uh, that was uh, pass number three, I believe. Uh, I'm just uh, gonna go and kneel it again. Just wanted to show you the tools that I've been using. Um, so far, I've just used these three. Um, this one has a bit of a radius on, dull chisel. This one is just a short dull chisel, and this is my teardrop shape. Um, do a lot with these. Like there's, I don't need a whole lot of specialty tools on this particular shape. Um, so it's all pretty much gonna be done with that. On my next pass, I wanna sharpen things up. So I'm gonna bring this chisel in, which is um, sharper than my original one. You always start out with as dull as possible and then gradually move up to sharper and sharper. If you try to go in with something very sharp early on, you're gonna end up fatiguing the metal and splitting it. Um, so you have to really sneak up on the sharper chisel. So I don't know if I'm gonna get much sharper than that. I don't need to get super sharp focus on this particular piece. In fact, the way it is now, I think it, it pretty much um, relays or conveys what I'm trying to um, project on this particular thing. But I'm gonna try to sharpen it up a little bit more just because I'm having fun. So here we go. All right, uh, we're about three hours in and I think I've reached a sufficient level of detail for what this is, so I'm happy enough with it. Uh, I'm not doing anything with the hands here because there'll be snakes coming down here that I'll be attaching in um, in the next video. You gotta come back for the next video where I'm gonna put the cuneiform um, inscription along the side and then there is several lines that need to be inscribed in there. So it'll all come together in the next video. But for right now, I'm just gonna do my typical thing, grab some gun blue, um, antique the entire thing, and then buff out the highlights so we can get a nice um, thumbnail. We're trying to get some nice uh, sexy clickbait for the YouTube um, al algorithm. So let's see what happens. And there we go. But there's more to come there, boys and girls. So come back in the next video. We'll see how this all comes together. But for now, I'm going to say, see ya!